Now the uh, play that you're going to see this afternoon was written by James Barry, who was born in Kiramuir in Scotland in 1860. He was a shy boy and very ambitious, and he wrote before he went to school. And when he got out of school, he became a newspaper man. And then he started to write fiction. And like all good writers, he wrote about the life that he knew best, which for him was the village life of Scotland. He turned to the theater and he became in time the master of a kind of comedy which has been called wistful or pathetic, but anyway is a very dangerous thing to imitate. He was, by the way, a small man, a very frail man with a little spindly neck and a great big dome of a head. He looked, you could say, rather like, well, one of the men from Mars if they should turn out to be as kindly as we think them ferocious. Now Barry says about this play that he set the scene in your own home, in your own living room, if you're living in it, in 1913. This is what he says in the preface. Actually, it is the house of Harry Sims. It pleases us to make Harry a city man. But if you cavil at that, he can be turned with the scrape of the pen into a fashionable doctor, secretary of state, or what you will. It is that day in Harry's career when everything went wrong, just when everything seemed to be superlatively right. In Harry's case, it was a woman who did the mischief. She came to him in his great hour and told him she did not admire him. This is the subject of the play, and quite enough too. And so now to the play, The Twelve Pound Look by Sir James Barry, and the characters in the order of their appearance will be Noel Leslie as Toombs, the butler, Cyril Richard as Sir Harry Sims, Joan Wetmore as Lady Sims, and Helen Hayes as Kate. Sir Harry Sims. Harry. Oh, Tombs. Well, that was all right, eh? Oh, yes, I think perfectly. But um, was it dignified? Oh, very. And it would be still more so when you have the sword. Ah, yes, the sword does lend it an air. Let me see, there are the five things, really. There's the glide, the dip, the tap, the kiss, and then you back out a night. It's a short but uh, very beautiful ceremony. Uh, Emmy, anything you can suggest? No. You don't think you practice till you know what to do almost, almost too well. No, Emmy, I do not. Don't be so ridiculous. Wait till your opinion's asked for. I'm sorry, Harry. Lie, dip, the kiss. The Flora typewriting agency, Sir Harry. Oh, yes, of course, Tombs. I telephoned them to send someone along. Uh, it's a woman, I suppose, Tombs, Yes, it? Sir Harry. Uh, you can show her in here. Oh. Uh, remember, that I, I shan't be Sir Harry, Tombs, until Thursday. I beg pardon, sir, but it is such a satisfaction to us. Ah, they like it downstairs, do they? Especially the females, Sir Harry. <laughs> yes, uh, that will do, Tombs. Show her in, will you? And, um, Emmy, you can show her what she's brought here to do while I change. You might um, also tell her the sort of things about me that come better from you instead of me. Did you notice what Toome said, and especially the females, and his right success? The women like it even better than the men, for they share. You share, Lady Sims. Ah, uh, ah, uh, not a woman, but will see that gown and be sick with envy at the sight of it. I know them. Ask all our lady friends round to have a look at it. It'll make them ill with envy. <laughs>
Good morning, madam. Good morning. Is that the typewriter? Yes. I suppose I'm to work in here. Yes. Uh -huh. In that case, then, I may as well take this off. I get on better without it. Certainly. <coughs> I, I ought to apologize for my gown. I'm to be presented this week, and I, I was trying it on. It's a beautiful gown, if I may presume to say so. Yes, very beautiful. Sit down, please. I suppose it's some copying you want. I got no particulars. I was only given the address, and that was all. Oh, it isn't for me. It's for my husband. Oh. And it isn't exactly copying. He wants a number of letters answered. Hundreds of them. Letters and telegrams of congratulations. Yes. My husband is a remarkable man. He's about to be knighted for his services to... Um, for his services. Oh, he can explain this so much better than I can. And I'm to answer the letters of congratulations? Yes. Oh, well, I, it's a work I've had some experience at. <clears throat> oh, dear. You mustn't begin until you know what he wants to say. Only a specimen letter. Won't it be the usual thing? Is there a usual thing? Oh, yes. How quickly you do that. It must be delightful to be able to do something and to do it well. Yes, it is delightful. Oh, but excuse me. This won't be any use. My husband wants me to explain to you that his is an exceptional case. He didn't try to get this honor. It came as a complete surprise to him. That's what I've written. But how could you know? I only guess. Is that the, the usual thing? Oh, yes. They don't try to get it. Uh, I don't know. We're, we're just told to put that in the letters. But I ought to explain. My husband is not a man who cares for honors. As long as he does his duty. Yes, I've been putting that in. Have you? But he particularly wants it made clear that he would have declined the title were it not I've got it here. What have you got? Indeed, I would have asked to be allowed to decline were it not that I want to please my wife. How did you know it was that? Is it? Do they all accept for that reason? Well, it's what we're told to put in the letters. It's almost as though you knew my husband. I assure you, I don't even know his name. <gasps> he wouldn't like that. I ought to have... Oh, but here he comes himself. Ah, oh, there we are, dear. Harry, this is the lady. Yes, of course. Good morning. I've been trying to explain to yes, her. Yes, uh, uh, you... what? Um, I, if you would wait outside, I, I will attend to her. You? Yes. It's funny. The shamelessness of your daring to come here. I assure you it's no less of a shock to me. Oh. I was given the number of the house. I wasn't told the name. I came here in the ordinary way of business. Business. Ordinary way of business. So this is what you've fallen to, a typist. Think of it. After being through much worse straits, I'll be bound. Much worse straits. Oh, my congratulations. Thank you, Harry. Eh? What was that you called me, madam? Isn't it Harry? On my soul, I forget. It isn't Harry to you. My name is Sims, if you please. Oh, I hadn't forgotten that. It was mine, too, you know. <laughs> it was yours until you forfeited the right to bear it. Exactly. I was curious to see you come here. But now, on second thoughts, it rather pleases me. There is a grim justice in this. Tell me. Do you know why you've been brought here today? I've just been learning. You've been made a knight, and I'm to answer the letters of congratulations. That's it. That's it. You come here today as my servant. I, who might have been Lady Sin. Yes. And you're her typist instead. And she has four men servants. Oh, I'm glad you saw her in her presentation gown. I wonder if she'd let me do her washing, Sir Harry. You can go. The thought that only a few stairs keep you, such as you, from my innocent children. You have children? Two. Such a nice number. Both boys. Successful in everything. Are they like you, Sir Harry? They are very like me. That's nice. Will you please to go? Hi, home. 
What'll I say to my employer? That's not my affair. No. What will you say to Lady Sims? I flatter myself that whatever I do, Lady Sims will accept without comment. Still the same old Harry. What do you mean? Only that you have the old confidence in your profound understanding of the sex. I suppose that I know my own wife. I suppose so. I was just remembering that you used to think you knew her in the days when I was the lady. <laughs> well, goodbye, Sir Harry. Won't you ring and the four men servants will show me out? Uh, one moment. While you're here, it's one thing. Tell me, who was the man? You never found out. I could never be sure. I thought that would worry you. Well, it's plain that he soon left you. Very soon. As I could have told you. Well, who was it? Well, it's 14 years ago. It can't matter to anybody now. Kate, tell me who it was. Better not ask. But I do ask. Tell me. It's kinder not to tell you. Then, by gad, it was one of my pals. Was it Bernard Roach? It may have been someone that comes to my house still. Oh, I think not. 14 years, you see. <laughs> you got my letter, you found it that night when you came home? Yes. Yes, I propped it against the decanter. I felt sure you'd see it there. It, it was a room not unlike this, with the furniture arranged in the same attractive way. Oh, how it all comes back to me. Can't you see me, Harry, in hat and cloak, putting the letter there and stealing out into the night to meet... Who? Him. Hours pass. There is no sound in the room but the tick tack tick tack of the clock. And then, around midnight, you return, alone. You take the letter. I was not alone. No? Oh, here, have I been picturing it wrongly all these years? I believe something interesting happened. Something undoubtedly annoying. Oh, do tell me. No, 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 nothing about that now. Tell me, who was he? Come on. Well, surely a man has a right to know with whom his wife voted. Surely the wife has a right to know how he took it. Ah. Fair exchange. You tell me who it, uh, what, what happened, and I'll tell you who it was. You will. Uh-huh. Very well. That's quite like old times. <coughs> Go on, Harry. Well, you know that I was dining at the club that night. Yes, I did. Jack Lamb said he'd drive me home. Mabbitt Green was with us, and I asked them to come in for a moment. Jack and they did. Lamb, Mabbitt Green. I think I remember them. Jack Lamb was in Parliament? No, that was Mabbitt. Oh. Well, they came into the house. Was it him? Who? Mabbitt. What? The man. What man? Oh, no, Harry. I thought you said he came into the house with you. Well, that may have been a blind. Well, it wasn't. Go on. Well... They came into the house to continue a talk that we'd been having at the club. Very interesting talk, evidently. Well, you remember that the papers that evening were full of the elopement of some countess woman who ran off with a fiddler, was her name. Oh, does it matter? No, well, we had been discussing the thing, and I had been rather warm. I, uh... I'm beginning to see. You have been saying that it served the husband right, that any man who couldn't look after his wife deserved to lose her. Was that it? Or it was a favorite theme of yours? Harry, say it was that. It may have been something like that. <laughs> and all the while the letter was there waiting. Oh, Harry, it was sweet of you to tell me.